all right reading from the book of Enoch uh, a continuation from chapter 93 although this uh, particular passage may or may not be uh, labeled correctly in the uh, in the publication of the book of Enoch that you have uh, nevertheless it's, it's uh, um, dealing with the 10 weeks of Enoch and uh, we're going to be reading in a passage dealing with the 8th week of Enoch so um, you know if you have the book of Enoch it's somewhere in the, in the neighborhood of chapter 93 uh, and um, you'll, you'll, you'll clearly see the passage dealing with the, uh, the chronology of the earth and its kingdoms all right and its events and uh it's, it's divided into weeks according to enoch tonight i'm going to be uh going into some precepts about the eighth week of enoch uh because right now uh, at this particular point is my my uh understanding so far from what i could tell uh, on this uh age that we're in we're in the eighth week all right um, you know, so we're going to take a look at this and get some good precepts. All right. So here we go. Enoch. And, uh, like I said, this is, this is in chapter 93, but I won't give a verse because there's a, uh, there's a typo in my book. So I'm talking, look at other books and compare. I wouldn't know if this is a continuation from the same chapter or another verse in that chapter or what. Okay, so here we go. All right. And after that, there shall be another, the eighth week, that of righteousness. And a sword shall be given to it that a righteous judgment may be executed on the oppressors. And sinners shall be delivered into the hands of the righteous. And at its close... They shall acquire houses through their righteousness and a house shall be built for the great king in glory forevermore. And all mankind shall look to the path of uprightness. Amen. All right. So as you saw that uh, in the eighth week, uh, <laughs> There was a sword given to the righteous to execute vengeance on the oppressors, all right? So you know how the Most High said, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. He will repay. Uh, but don't forget that he also uses the hands of man to uh, repay his enemies, all right? Yeah, he does. Uh, but this judgment that's coming is going to be repaid upon the oppressors by the hands of the righteous. Who are the righteous? Those uh, who have been made righteous by the blood of the Lamb. And that is who? The children of Israel, all right? That's right. So we're going to take another precept uh, dealing with this sword given to the righteous to execute this vengeance upon the heathens, all right? Amen. All right. So let's go uh, to the book of Psalms first and get uh, uh, some real good precepts, all right, about, about this, uh, this righteous uh, judgment, okay, executed upon the heathen by the elect, man, you know what I'm saying? You know, uh, and uh, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna probably read a couple of chapters. Uh, we're going to probably start around 147, all right? So, a little Psalm 147 first. You know what I'm saying? Because Enoch said that uh, the sword was going to be given uh, to execute vengeance, man. All right? A sword was going to be given to the eighth, the generation in the eighth week to ex execute vengeance on uh, some oppressors, right? Now, we always, you know, preach uh, about, you know, the need for the oppression to stop, 
towards blacks in America or blacks anywhere in the world because, uh, you know, the whore Babylon is getting drunk off Jacob's blood in England, uh, you know, Africa, everywhere. The whore still drinking and getting drunk off Jacob's blood. So the, the oppression doesn't stop. Nevertheless, this sword that the Most High has given his elect is going to cause this oppression to stop. And what sword is that that he's given his elect? His, the sword that he's given his elect is the sword of Yahweh. The rod of his mouth. All right. That's right. Yeah. The sword of Yahweh is the rod of his mouth. The rod of his mouth is his word. Yahweh Shai. That gospel that he gave us. Okay. That gospel that we get uh, from our faith. Uh, Yahweh Shai, his death. The gospel of salvation according to faith in Yahweh Shai, which is trusting in his death as. Uh, the atonement for our sins, okay? The holy, unblemished, and righteous sacrifice made once, all right? So that's how Israel's become righteous and made righteous. And, um, you know, the other nations, however, hasn't had that uh, privilege, okay? And uh, you can't you know, say there's any unrighteousness with God because God uh, says, you know, um, you know, was not Esau Jacob's brother yet? Jacob have I loved and Esau have I hated. You see what I'm saying? So it's up to him totally to choose who he want, even when it comes down to such a thin line as um, one brother or the other brother born on the same day out of the same womb, right? It's his prerogative, his, like Bobby Brown used to say, it's his, my prerogative. Yeah, he can do what he want. He can do what he want to do. He's the most high, all right? So check it out. We're going to uh, see if we could get a precept for the prophet Enoch and uh, edify the elect and cut the false prophets like uh, the GMS uh, false apostles who tell you that books uh, Enoch and Jasher or some make-believe stuff, you can't find precepts for these books and the scriptures, they say. They say that these uh, writings are made up by uh, the white man. And that, uh, well, I'm gonna tell you something, the white man might be smart, but he ain't this smart. He ain't this smart, man. He, I mean, he ain't that damn smart where he can come up with you no know, hundred and some chapters, okay? And uh, the only so-called contradiction you bum as false prophets think y'all find uh, is a contradiction dealing with Nimrod being killed by Esau. Y'all call that a contradiction because you you say Nimrod uh, was way before Esau. There's no uh, uh, way possible that Nimrod could have been slain by Esau when Nimrod was in a whole nother time on the earth. All right, well, we'll see about that, man. How can you prove that? How can you prove that just because uh, Nimrod was the founder of the Tower of Babel that he didn't live to see uh, Abraham's uh, grandson Esau uh, to grow up and to be a young man? I mean, do you have a scripture to prove that? I like to see it, man. Show me the scripture that tell me uh, what age Esau, I mean, Nimrod died. What scripture tells me at, uh, the age uh, Nimrod died, GMS? Tell me that. Matter of fact, where you bum stand at? I'm going to make sure I stand right where you bum stand at over here by Gap. It's lights out over here for you bums, all right? But that's exactly what this question is. Lights out for you damn bums. All right, you damn bums. Tell me, how old, GMS, I'm standing right here where you damn babies is, you, you see your little dolls asleep. I know you damn babies asleep too, but I'm gonna wake your ass up with this question, man. What scripture could tell me how old Nimrod was uh, when, he, when he died? Because that's the only way you could prove that Nimrod wasn't around when Esau was around, is if you know how old Nimrod was when uh, he died, man. Okay, you damn bums. Now let me go back over here to the light where uh, 
anybody that's awake uh, with their eyes open can see. All right. I'm going to come over here back to this light so that the people who got eyes to see and ears to hear can see and hear what the Most High is trying to reveal to his people in these hour, in this last hour, in these last days. OK. All right. So GMS, let me know. Get back at me. Since y'all say that uh, Enoch is a false prophet or Jasher or whatever book it was you was trying to discredit due to Enoch uh, being the founder of the Tower of Babel, which would have put him way back in the early days and Esau being a son of Jacob, I mean, excuse me, a son of Isaac uh, and, you know, obviously coming along in some uh, later time in history later on down the line and earth. but uh you know but what what scripture do you got though what scripture do you got to prove that, those uh theories because you don't got no scripture to prove uh that theory that the contradiction in those books is dealing with timeline you have no scripture to prove uh the timeline of, of birth and death of esau nor nimrod to eat to 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 emphatically uh, preach and proclaim that the books of Jasher and Enoch are 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 are, are myth uh, mythological, you know, mythological fairy tales made up by the white man. For what reason, man? For what reason, man? I like to know that, but I know the reason why. It was no surprise, y'all. Just the seed of y'all follow the devil out here trying to sow confusion so that the sheep won't uh, get all the meat that they need. But don't worry about it, y'all. Precious elect, y'all brother Peter right here. To feed y'all, man. You know what I'm saying? Straight up, man. You know what I'm saying? Y'all brother shimmy y'all. Uh, you know, the cannot, the zealot. I'm zealous for the truth. I'm zealous for righteousness. That's why, just like my brother Peter, pull that sword out in that garden and cut the shit out, you damn sellouts. I'm gonna cut y'all, cut y'all ass too. In this day and age, all right? Because the gates of hell ain't gonna prevail against you. I was shy my Shiox assembly, man. Straight up, and we're gonna preach this gospel to all of you heathens and rebuke all you rebels, all right, until that day. Straight up, straight just like that, all right. All right, get it right. We're gonna go, uh, Psalm, go to Psalm. I think we're gonna start at 147. Yeah, you got, uh, you got some, you got the, the you got the. The wild out tonight, you know, instead of saying, you know, all, all, all kinds of uh, madness jumping off, you know, uh, you got the paramedics and the police on this one. Some white girl over there sound like she's dealing with some demons, maybe in the form of alcohol, but whatever it is, it's taking over her, right? All that, all that, uh, you know. <laughs> you know, that mumbo jumbo hollering and screaming fussing at them people when they trying to help her anyway okay check it out all right let's see praise most high praise him while we got a bean all right let's let's deal with a precept real quick though because i don't want to lose thought of this um i ain't gonna read this whole chapter but we're going to read this verse real quick out of uh, Psalms 146, all right? Now, our brother Enoch just told us that in the eighth week, there was a sword uh, to be given to the righteous to execute vengeance on the oppressors, man. Okay? So uh, look at look at verse seven in Psalms 146. Take a look at that, and I'm gonna I'm gonna see if GMS uh, or any other false prophet church uh, could come up with an explanation, um, you know, to say that this is in a precept from Enoch. But I'm gonna, let's let the Most High speak. 146 and verse seven of Psalm. No, we got to go back to six. No, let's no matter of fact. No, 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 no. Let's go to five because uh, he said that the sword was going to be given to the righteous. Right. 
given to a righteous, the righteous, to execute uh, vengeance upon the oppressors. All right, so let's look at five. One, Psalm 146, five. Happy is he that hath Allahayim of Yaqob for his help, whose help is in Yahweh, his Allahayim, which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is therein, which keepeth truth forever. Verse 7. Which executed judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, Yahweh looseth the prisoners. Yahweh openeth the eyes of the blind. Yahweh raiseth them that are bowed down. Yahweh loveth the righteous. Yahweh preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked, he turneth upside down. Verse 10. Yahweh shall reign forever, even thy Allah Hayyam, O Sion, unto all generations. Praise ye, Yahweh. You saw that? So you saw how he executed vengeance for the oppressed? All right. Yeah, straight up. And he executed vengeance for the oppressed. He, oh, he gives sight to the blind. He raised up the bow down. Huh. Who does that sound like to you? Sounds like Jesus Christ to me because that's exactly what he did and he is Yahweh. All right. For he is Yahweh's word made flesh. And uh, that was the cause of his death and execution. Blasphemy. Blasphemy. Why? Because calling himself by uh, the son of the Most High was uh, the equivalent of calling himself as powerful as the Most High. And therefore, that was blasphemy to those unbelievers because... They were looking with the eyes, their carnal eyes and not the spiritual eyes, all right? And they didn't have a near to hear because they were of the father, the devil, and not of our father the other faith, Abraham. All right. So uh, I wanted to point that out. All right. You see that? that you know what I'm saying? All right. That, 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 was, that, was, uh, that was real, real, real deep. Okay. Verse 7 was what I wanted to uh, highlight though Which executed judgment for the oppressed <laughs> Which gives food To the hungry You see what I'm saying Hey, Because he said we was, uh, Enoch said that we was going to acquire uh, Houses and things You understand what I'm saying So uh, we were oppressed We were robbed We were spoiled But we're going to get uh, vengeance Because of the death of Jesus And uh, Jesus said he's going to give us a rod To execute with hey, Yeah man you know, we was going to inherit these heathens for an inheritance. Oh, yeah, man. So it's all consistent. So that's a good precept uh, that we saw dealing with the eighth week of Enoch. All right. So let's keep going. All right. Before we move, get from right here and, uh, you know what I'm saying, go, go, go and uh, prophesy at another location, man. All right. Ba'asham Yahweh Shai Adonaiya. All praise Yahweh. Amen. Yeah, how would I? All praise to Yah right now. <laughs> Amen. All right. Let's go down to the next chapter. Psalm 147. Okay. 